flexible. We've got lots of other sessions for the next couple of days. Tomorrow there's a wider hospitality um, session at three o'clock, covering all areas of regulation, but today is specifically about fire safety. Um, normal housekeeping that we've all talked about over the past almost two years. Um, happy for you to keep your cameras on if you prefer, but the session is being recorded, um, so just be mindful of what you put in the chat maybe. Um, and all recordings will be available on our YouTube channel when um, the comms team upload those for us. Uh, raise your hands, we'll answer all questions either along the way, whether Mark and Dave prefer that, or at the end of the session if we've got time. And please use the raise your hand and chat facility, get involved and have a, a good discussion. So welcome everyone. And just to mention also tomorrow at four o'clock, there's a cross white hall briefing for uh, regulators. And um, the link will be posted in the chat by Nicole. Um, that's four till five tomorrow. And we'll put the link in if you want to register for that. Mm -hmm. So introduce and thank you to our speakers, Mark Andrews and Dave Powsland, who are going to talk to you about fire safety in the hospitality sector. Um, over to you, Mark and Nicole for the slides, please. Excellent stuff. Thank you, uh, Caroline. Uh, just to correct uh, Caroline on one thing, if there's any uh, questions, of course, uh, Caroline and Dave will uh, answer all the questions. Uh, I'm merely here just to uh, provide a, a brief introduction to the main event, which is uh, Dave's case study uh, a bit later uh, on. Um, as Caroline said, uh, a warm welcome to everyone. It's a, it's a, it is a shame that we are still uh, all uh, corresponding on teams, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, congratulations to OPSS and Bayes for at least bringing the event together. Uh, all too often, these things are just a, a shell. So at least we have got the opportunity uh, to cover the subjects that we've got before us. Um, so I'm Mark Andrews, for those that don't know me, although I think I know most folk uh, on the call, uh, and I'm the National Fire Chiefs Council's representative for business engagement, and I work very closely uh, with Caroline uh, and Bay's colleagues to help uh, line up Bay's and NFCC to support uh, us from a regulatory perspective, as well as being a link and supporting the various sectors for which primary uh, authority apply. Um, so, uh, as Caroline said, I just want to re-state uh, a couple of those housekeeping. Please get involved in a session. There's nothing worse uh, than being uh, spread apart the country and just doing it on Teams. So, please get involved in the comments. Give lots of chat and support to myself and Dave uh, and show that uh, there's the interest. And if you can have your cameras on, it's just nice to see uh, some of the faces uh, for who we are talking to. And as Caroline said, um, hands up or get involved uh, in the discussion itself. Although Dave and I will try and leave a bit of space at the end for uh, something like a, a debate, if possible. There, I can see a couple of colleagues coming on. So hel hello to you all out there. Uh, that's it, nice. Um, good, so uh, Dave will introduce himself uh, in a moment when it gets uh, onto his part. Um, we've only got 45 minutes, so I really want to push on. Um, I know we've got a really varied audience uh, and uh, sometimes these aren't the very best mediums for getting engaged. But if, if we do get those questions in the chat part, we'll keep a log of that and that will provide a really good start to some of the work I want today's session to be a legacy for, which I'll talk about in a moment. So why are we here? Why are you here? Well, I wanted to be clear about the four things I think that we will do this afternoon. One, as ever, for those that have heard me before, is a focus on primary authority, better regulation, and how we can overall help promote growth uh, and recovery. Um, it's an opportunity to highlight the government's hospitality strategy, which is crucial to the session this afternoon, uh, and a bit of learning for those that aren't aware of, of the strategy and what it does. An opportunity to reflect on the Regulators Pioneer Fund uh, and the project that is being supported by NFCC and uh, West Sussex County Council, uh, where I work in my day job. Uh, and, and lastly, and perhaps most importantly, an, an update on uh, our Do You Have Paying Guest Guide, which I think will underpin uh, a lot of the, uh, of the way that we uh, help regulate, particularly with the small and medium sized businesses go in, going forward. So um, just uh, one final point, I think, before I get on to the presentation itself, and that is just, uh, you know, thinking about what, when we come on to these seminars, come on to these conference and choosing these sessions, uh, you know, the so what question, what, what do we want to leave as a legacy from this next uh, 40 minutes or so? And when I reflect on doing this last year, which, again, some of you will have joined me at, we, we were focused at that point on uh, housing 
uh, with care. Uh, we did a similar session, really good, really good engagement. But what I'm really pleased to reflect on 12 months later, but as a direct result of that presentation and, and your contribution, those that were there, we have managed to have a housing with care uh, meeting that is now a really sustainable part of the uh, Bayes and NFCC calendar that is really starting to help shape and influence and share best practice uh, and be supported by the Home Office, uh, LJ and other key stakeholders. So uh, similar to that legacy, I want this afternoon's session to leave behind something of a sustainable impact uh, as we all try and grapple with um, recovering from this dreadful couple of years that we have had in terms of the pandemic. So uh, if we can, Nicole, to move on to the first uh, slide, if we could, please, just to set a bit of context uh, and first of all, focus on the hospitality strategy that I uh, made reference to. Uh, and if we just take a, a, a bit of a, a wee step back, um, uh, as ever, this thing about primary authority and business engagement for me uh, and those that have heard me speak, uh, I often talk about the business of relationships, network and the wider support. And already by coming on this conference, you're doing your bit about trying to help and support us be a bigger, greater network that can help influence change and help influence uh, the recovery that we so desperately need on our high streets. And we so desperately need to support our uh, friends in the hospitality sector. So that relationships, that network is absolutely the first or key point I'd like to draw ourselves uh, towards. A hospitality strategy is great, and we'll talk about that in a second. Regulation is there to do a job. But overall, uh, us as regulators, as officers, as colleagues, that relationship building to help promote consistency, to help promote uh, better, smarter working is absolutely fundamental. And as the business engagement lead for NFCC, I'm always going to strongly promote that. And I think better regulation, I think primary authority really underpins what relationships and partnerships are all about and working in a primary authority and working to support each other is really where the good work happens and the magic happens to to provide that better regulations and help our economy uh, and businesses uh, grow and certainly helps us as the national fire chiefs council's regulators deliver uh, on consistency which we need to always have a focus on it also, of course, from a regulator's perspective, those of you out there that are regulators really helps with that efficiency and effectiveness. And I hope uh, Dave's uh, case study later will help draw some of those really key points out. And frankly, it, uh, although I talk about efficiency, uh, I talk about effectiveness often with various um, conferences and, and, and pieces of work that I do. I, I'm not so sure there is quite a, a time or a topic such as this where those two words uh, have been so uh, applicable. So just reflecting on the hospitality sector for a moment, um, we know that it's comprised of uh, nearly 150,000 businesses around the UK and it, uh, employs nearly 2 million people. And back in 2019, before all of the uh, pandemic uh, uh, hit, it was generating to UK PLC over £40 billion in gross value added all of which are really significant numbers. So how do we help restore some of that? The COVID-19, of course, has had a big effect on the hospitality sector, and we've all witnessed through the news and the media uh, and uh, all of the, some of the challenges it's had. And despite the significant investment and the support that government has given, uh, particularly this sector, there is still lots of work to do. Much of the course of the government's um, support, much of the funding has been targeted at hospitality uh, and we've seen all of us and probably benefited from some of those schemes uh, such as the eat out eat, eat out to help out which was uh, you know i thought a really really good success but what we're here to talk about now is about how we can make that sustainable and bring life back to our uh, high streets thank you nicole so I'll, I'll just I'll just will ask uh, again as a sort of first action for you because it's not going to be me doing all the hard work this afternoon that you take a note of that Bayes uh, that hospitality strategy link that's on top of the um, oh, sorry uh, on the bottom of that slide uh, and if you're not familiar with the hospitality strategy uh, please uh, drop that link uh, into your system uh, and look it up it's an easy read but it will give you a really clear idea in talking to your partners talking to your colleagues and the forums you work within uh, a really good strategic link to the aims uh, of government 
So at uh, launch last summer, the hospitality strategy is designed to kickstart uh, re uh, reopening, recovery and longer term resilience uh, of the hospitality sector uh, in response to the, the pandemic. The strategy itself is divided into the three R's, as I've mentioned, uh, reopening, recovery and resilience. And it, and it proposes uh, for the hospitality sector to have a council to help with providing a legacy in terms of managing the action plan and the 22 recommendations that are contained within the report. So it's not just a report that talks about, uh, you know, some of the good ideas that we have. It, it also really helpfully introduces the Hospitality Council, which I think will be crucial in holding to account uh, government and the other stakeholders involved to make sure the hospitality sector gets that sustainable support that it needs to, to genuinely recover and generally bring that life back to the high streets, uh, as I've mentioned. So the council itself, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, hospitality sector council, will have the responsibility, as I say, for those 22 recommendations. Um, and as you flick through, you'll see and probably recognise a lot of those good ideas uh, for things like uh, trade shows, for things like better marketing, export training and such like. Uh, and this is where I think we can start to help to influence. And I talked about that legacy of this presentation this afternoon. Uh, and we we have already got uh, a hospitality panel, uh, which Caroline um, helps coordinate and facilitate. And whilst in the last 18 months, evidently that hospitality panel has been knee deep in the work of trying to support recovery, trying to make sense of the ever changing uh, uh, scope of the, of the uh, pandemic. As we emerge into recovery, I think it's important that the hospitality panel starts to do its heavy lifting to help inform and influence that hospitality sector council. Now, there's some fairly big hitting colleagues uh, in that council. We've got the chief executive uh, 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 of hospitality, Kate Nichols, Emma McClarkin of the British Beer and Pub Association and the chief executive, Nick McKenzie of the Green King. And, and the link between those three significant colleagues is they all have primary authority partnerships. So they already buy into and understand primary authority. So for us as a group, anybody on this call, uh, I think we absolutely need to get involved in the primary authority uh, uh, panel, hospitality panel, uh, and make sure that that is the forum where we take forward our good ideas to help influence and hold to account, frankly, um, on against those 22, uh, 22 recommendations and, and, and help our partners uh, find that gateway of that and that voice in terms of that in influence. So please uh, get involved and Caroline will, I'm sure, help put the links and the information in the chat bar as we go through. So I'm going to move on from the hospitality strategy into uh, the second piece I wanted to update us on, which was the regula regulators pioneer fund. So Nicole, if you can move us on and you can all read the slide there that gives an outline of, of what this fund is. We all like to benefit from grants that are out there uh, and, and you know, make the time worthwhile in terms of filling in these various applications. And the National Fire Chiefs Council spotted an opportunity to get involved in this particular fund. The, the Pioneer Fund, uh, as the name suggests, helps encourage innovation uh, and growth. And spotting an opportunity, the National Fire Chiefs Council and my colleagues in West Sussex Fire and Rescue Service uh, ha were successful with one of those bids, securing just under £200,000 to develop a new virtual technology uh, app or application to assist in business engagement uh, and help businesses understand fire safety in the workplace, wh which we know is still an issue. Traditionally, we've done this in a, a various number of ways, from leaflets to engagement sessions to portals on our various websites. And what the NFCC are trying to do here is underpin that uh, basic fire safety awareness through a more interactive, more 21st century uh, virtual reality tool. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to give a demonstration uh, soon and it's a nice look forward to um, probably some of the work we can do through the panel I've made reference to. But uh, basically, it's a virtual reality tool whereby it'll be a free portal that the NFCC will host and all of our fire and rescue service colleagues will have free access to it that you can then pass on to your uh, your partners, your partnerships. 
Um, and the model will be that uh, the staff uh, or managers will be able to go onto that portal and learn about the basics of fire safety. And we can absolutely model it to represent a hospitality type setting. Uh, and, and yeah, it's really interactive. Uh, it's really engaging. It's much more uh, fun than just reading through a leaflet uh, and really does prompt you on some of those basic fire safety uh, awareness and risk assessment uh, thoughts that uh, colleagues should have. And, and the wonder of the tool uh, and the magic, if you like, is the fact that every time there's an engagement or an interaction with that particular tool uh, that will be uh, pu published all around the country is that in the background, it'll be gathering data and trends and information from the user that is navigating their way through this virtual reality restaurant come kitchen. So that, uh, if, for example, if they, if uh, the colleagues consistently make mistakes around portable firefighting equipment or make mistakes around uh, uh, notices, signs, means of escape, it doesn't matter which element of the fire safety, that all that data will all be recorded and fed back into NFCC. So whilst whilst at the front end, it's a fairly straightforward bit of gamification of fire safety awareness in the background, it's gathering some really important trends, trends and data that, frankly, we have not had in our sector ever to be able to influence and inform future protection, prevention and um, strategy. So a really exciting bit of innovation led by National Fire Chiefs Council. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to a, a, an inevitable launch in due course that your partners uh, uh, and yourselves alike uh, can be involved in. OK, uh, so more of that uh, in the future. Nicole, if you can just move on to slide uh, five, uh, please. So um, some folk, I'm sure, will be well aware of the Do You Have Paying Guests guide, I'm sure. Uh, and frankly, the moments that I have left on this presentation will not let me do justice to the work that we've been uh, involved in trying to get this, uh, what appeared to be a very simple pamphlet uh, published. Um, and really it chimes, I'd rather me get into the detail of the pamphlet itself, because it, 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 is, it is that, it's a guide for simple hospitality premises. I just wanted to reinforce the context of what this represents, because the whole session today is about better regulation, partnerships, smarter working uh, uh, relationships, as I talked about. And here is an example where the National Fire Chiefs Council uh, worked really hard to deal with what was more of a, a, a macro challenge uh, around the uh, ever emerging, ever exciting, dynamic, uh, really uh, 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 fantastic shared economy sector uh, that is making its way in all sorts of different ways, but certainly in the hospitality sector to really do great things for UK PLC. But without getting into the detail uh, on this call, evidently there was some, some challenge around, great that that is a flourishing sector, but how do we effectively uh, provide balanced, consistent, pragmatic, proportionate enforcement? And how do we make sure that the traditional hospitality sector who register and license uh, and come under the full sort of regulatory framework, how do we make that balance as regulators? And actually, I'd like to claim the fact that NFCC did a really good job uh, with our colleagues in the Home Office and the uh, Department for Culture, Medium uh, and Sport in reviewing this guide to provide something that was far more proportionate that helped that shared economy and the traditional she sector provide that proportionate uh, level of enforcement and safety for our guests from home and abroad uh, in a really simple way that was not burdensome, uh, but yeah, still focused on keeping folk safe. Uh, well, that, that's all well and good. And, and exciting news was this was a, a, a and will attract Article 50 uh, support from the Secretary of State. But uh, uh, folk will know that this is, uh, you know, 80 months out of date now in terms of being published. I could say that's all to do with the pandemic. But actually, uh, what we uh, as National Fire Chiefs Council are striving to do is publish revised guidance about a whole range of fire safety advice. Uh, and, th and this Do You Have Paying Guest Guide will be relaunched uh, as part of a series of small guides uh, by the um, NFCC that will include a guide to simple flats, a guide to simple non-domestic premises that used to be the old short guide to keeping your premises safe, and then this guide uh, as well. And we're in the final throes of, of, of finalising that for publication. So it was just to mark everyone's card that it's well on my radar 
uh, keeps me awake at night, uh, frankly, but it's well on my radar uh, and it will be published soon um, and, and will be a real benefit for those uh, colleagues out there who are engaging with partnerships who have got that uh, a, a multiple, unusual, small premises um, that we see a proliferation of around our, our, our beautiful countryside and attracts so many visitors from around the world and provides that proportionate approach to fire safety. Uh, and just to prove it, the next slide, Nicole, uh, which was really important to us in terms of prime authority, consistency, proportionality, is uh, there is a series of case studies which give a really clear and unambiguous solution to the fire safety standards we expect in the various scenarios from an open plan studio flat, as you can see there on the on the screen, to small houses, uh, to um, uh, to. Uh, horse boxes to caravans to yurts and and you know a long list of other scenarios where you can these days get accommodation uh, around the countryside so uh, hopefully a really good piece of work once it's published thank you nicole okay so i think we lost a slide there. so um last couple of points from me then uh, i just want to introduce the protection of fire standard and, and really the relevance of this and the importance of this one to me uh, frankly is the fact that it is a fire standard. Uh, and those of us that uh, have worked hard in the prime authority environment to uh, make a strategic case for why prime authority is a good thing, and I, and I hope I'm talking to the uh, preaching to converted this afternoon, but we've got a job, haven't we, in terms of encouraging and improving the take up of prime authority. And it frustrates me no end when some of our strategic colleagues don't get the benefits of of, of good prime authority, good, better regulation. And it would have been a really sad day had it not been included on in the protection of fire standard. But crucially, and I think it's a massive milestone for prime authority, is that within our fire service fire standards, for those non-fire service colleagues, effectively, this is a uh, an internal standard for the fire service that will be part of the inspection framework that to put not too much of a finer point on it, we must, as fire and rescue services, deliver primary authority as part of our portfolio to our community. So that's a really good standard that will be held to account against and should help us in encouraging strategic leaders to see the benefit of uh, engaging with primary authority. Uh, and I will continue to meet with those colleagues to um, uh, let them see the error of their ways where they don't see it as a benefit. I know, colleagues, there is a, a, a bigger challenge at the moment in terms of competency, resources and trying to get, frankly, uh, some of our basic fire safety delivery standards um, delivered. But nonetheless, we have to see the benefit and the business case of, of engagement with our businesses and primary authority uh, and this standard goes a long way to uh, cementing that. Okay, uh, I think there's just a, a last couple of um, slides before I hand over to um, uh, to Dave. So really just wanted to uh, reflect really the positive story of primary authority in hospitality so far, much more to do, but of the 310 fire uh, uh, safety partnerships that we have, uh, 300, uh, as you were, 45 are in the hospitality sector, which is 15% up, 15%. Uh, we could do more. Uh, and there are a whole range of uh, uh, of those partners, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, I would encourage you, and please, Caroline, can you put the link on the, uh, on the chat bar? The NFCC have a really good website that helps you as a good source of information to go to and links you onto all sorts of updates and information. Um, but... Uh, you know, I'd like to be meeting you again this time next year and see that number significantly increase. Uh, so my my last slide, uh, just I wanted to showcase some of those really excellent uh, partnerships. There you are. Uh, uh, so we have their English Heritage, which partner with Tyne and Weir, Accor Hotels, which partner with Greater Manchester, the Caravan Club with m uh, my local friends in Surrey Farm Rescue Service, Eden Project in Cornwall, of course, Q Hotels with Essex and finally Bourne Leisure uh, who uh, lit, line up a partnership with Devon uh, and Somerset FRS and that partnership includes Butlins, Haven and plenty others. So some really big hitting successful partnerships probably somewhere in your region and I'd really urge and encourage uh, that if you haven't got hospitality partnerships already then there's huge amounts of benefits as we're about to find out and I'd get in touch 
find out what, what and how to go around getting some of those partnerships. Uh, and uh, at least one of those was likely to be in your area or local area where you can go uh, and uh, get that feedback and that support. But that lines me up really nicely uh, to hand over to Dave um, and we will come back uh, at the end just for a quick roundup. But in the meantime, uh, thanks folks uh, and I'll pass you over to the lovely Dave Powsland. Uh, well, good afternoon everybody and thank you Mark. I uh, hope everybody can hear me. Uh, Mark, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Perfect, thank you. Um, uh, so, uh, as, as Mark said, my name is Dave Powsland. Uh, I work for Devon and Somerset Fire and Rescue Service and I'm the primary authority manager uh, for our service. So we are going to have a, uh, a quick look at a case study this afternoon, uh, which will hopefully bring some of the points that Mark has been talking about um, in, in, into the forefront of people's minds, but also uh, hopefully uh, an illustration of, and bring it alive. Um, so if we could have the next slide, please, Nicole. OK, if you want to. OK, so as as we most uh, or most people will know, hopefully people will know that um, uh, the um, if you like the green box on the slide that says primary authority, it's all about the advice, support, guidance, assistance, the information. Um, so from this uh, session, we're going to have a quick look at the model that Devon and Somerset have adopted uh, and then look at um, a case study of the model uh, working with our partners. OK, so if we could have the next one, please, Nicole. OK, so um, uh, yeah, if you want to put them all up so we get the uh, the last couple on there, perfect. OK, so this slide really um, uh, is uh, to sort of summarise our model. Um, most of our um, partners and uh, uh, most organisations will have that top word risk within the forefront of their minds and there'll be a number of things that feed into that uh, and some of those words around uh, around the word risk um, uh, will feature in some of the conversations that uh, uh, that take place um, but for pr primary authority to be really really effective um, there's obviously got to be some activity and that activity will come at a price and a cost uh, and there's a you know the, the the vision of the view of that is to the added value that it brings um so the greater the activity uh, the greater the cost can be um and uh, the greater added value however what i would like to do is to is to sort of focus on the picture in the middle really um because that one is quite key for me uh and it's about actually the uh the engagement and the networking and the people around the table uh, and that's not necessarily within a business that uh, uh, compliance or regulation sits with one person or one directorate. There's a number of people who feed into that um, and the regulators as well as the businesses around the table are quite key to that and that's where I think it really really sits with primary authority um, and from that the activity can come uh, and there is a cost as well and uh, and I'm sure Mark will um, you know, per perhaps give his thoughts from a, a strategic leadership perspective of a, a regulatory uh, authority um, it's actually the cost if that discussion in those forums don't take place um, because it's the cost of having to regulate and go and enforce and to uh, take it down um, a route rather than the engagement and uh, getting it right um, uh, from the point of view of uh, um, taking people on the journey and uh, and moving that forward and like I say the outcome hopefully will all be the added value OK, so uh, if we could have the next slide, please, Nicole. OK, so um, on the next slide, uh, you can see we've got there. So Devon and Somerset are in primary authority with Bourne Leisure. So um, uh, a piece of work that we did to add some value uh, to the business, but also to regulators, um, is that uh, one aspect that we found with our um, original partnership with Bourne Leisure is that there were a number of people who didn't uh, recognise or pick up that Bourne Leisure uh, were actually the, um, uh, if you like, the parent company or the over, uh, the umbrella company for Warner Leisure Hotels, Haven and Butlins. Uh, so a number of regulators were visiting uh, when the conversations came up. Oh, we, we didn't realise you were in primary authority or we didn't realise that the partnership was there. You know, can we, uh, you know, engage and uh, and and such like um, via alternative methods? Um, 
so one of the things that we did working with um, uh, OPSS was to have that conversation and to, to be able to get so the individual brand names which are trading organizations within, within their own right are now recognized as separate partners. So when local regulators are looking at the register or looking to engage, they actually pick up that Haven is a big part of Born Leisure, but Haven is registered as a business and a partnership on, on the uh, primary authority register. OK, so if we can have the next slide then, please. OK, so for the case, uh, for the case study to uh, bring some of this uh, together, um, with Bourne for Haven, uh, the Haven brand of the business, uh, they looked at changing their business um, a little while ago, and they were looking at introducing some semi-permanent tented structures uh, onto some of their Haven sites. And uh, as part of that process, what it meant was they needed to change some of their site licensing. And uh, one of the things they found from the business perspective is that when they went to change or amend their licenses because they were introducing these new types of structures, part of the uh, consultation process, they go to the local fire and rescue services and say, well, what's your view on this? How does this affect the fire standards? What, what would you expect to see? Um, so because there was no national guidance, there was no uh, um, sort of set standard for these, uh, they got a raft of replies and uh, you know as a business they find that quite difficult to um, sort of deal with and sort of say well actually if we have this here are we going to have that there well they've asked for something else so again from that consistency point of view they approached us as their uh, PA partner um, and asked if we could uh, uh, sort of work with them so as the picture indicates there on the screen then we uh, we looked at what the piece of the puzzle were we put that together and it was all about understanding but also managing the risk um, so if we can have the next slide, please, Nicole. So from that, uh, we did a piece of work with the business and we came up with some primary authority advice. So the primary authority advice was issued uh, some time ago. It's been regularly reviewed um, and it's up, next up for review in 2023. Um, from issuing that primary authority uh, advice, the uh, NFCC's event safety working group at the time uh, actually made contact with us and said would ourselves as Devon and Somerset but also our um, partner uh, be comfortable if that was looked at because there was a piece of work that the NFCC were looking at through the event safety group um, is to come up with some general guidance um, so that was uh, those conversations took place and within a very short period of time it was adopted across um, Wales through the Welsh Assembly and uh, that was uh, that was adopted, which was uh, picked up in the um, document that's uh, referenced on the right hand side of your screen. Um, as a result of that uh, happening, uh, the NFC, we then did a, a slightly wider piece of work with the NFCC and uh, all the information um, was put through the Fire Engineering and Technical Standards uh, Committee. And from that, the NFCC National Guidance was produced, which is um, on the next slide, I think, Nicole. So from uh, working with our partner to address uh, an issue that was identified um, under the primary authority, we were able to pick that up and then uh, we did some slightly wider piece of work outside of the partnership, but in uh, relation to supporting the NFCC and this guidance was produced. Uh, that then further went on uh, onto the last slide for me. Um, where the primary authority advice was obviously doing it what it needed to uh, for the um, for the business supporting the business um, that subsequently went on and was uh, supported the National Fire Chiefs Council that was recognised by OPSS and uh, and Bays and um, the outcome of that was uh, that was recognised for a regulatory excellence award. So uh, um, that's really just an illustration of all the that coming together and how primary authority I think works really really well um, so it was fire safety related but it came out of a fire safety query um, uh, in relation to uh, site licensing which was actually covered by uh, a different piece of legislation a different um, regulatory body however what it did do and it did illustrate and going back to the picture I used earlier on the slide it was about actually everybody getting around the table understanding what the issues were and looking at where that could best sit and support um, so uh, uh, that's the case study. Uh, so I'll hand back 
to Mark, unless anybody's got any questions. Okay, thank, that's excellent, Dave. Thanks very much. And and I think uh, you know more than the strategic overview, that that case study and case studies like it. And again, I would really urge uh, delegates on this call to go onto the NFCC website because there's a whole range of uh, really good case studies there that bring to life um, and give your business case for you, frankly, as to why pr pr primary authority works, why it delivers the consistency and the benefits for you as a regulator, as well as your partner, uh, and more broadly uh, help, of course, with that 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 hospitality strategy we talked about at, right at the top in terms of our small bit towards that uh, UK PLC uh, recovering. So uh, I've got a, a couple of other points that I can uh, I can reflect on, I think, uh, that are important for the session. But uh, I'm also really keen that you have your voice, folks. So uh, I, uh, Dave and I uh, and Caroline uh, are ke keen to hear your thoughts uh, on what we've said, uh, challenges, issues, um, before I perhaps do a couple of minute summary right at the end. So I'll just pause there uh, for, I'm sure, a rush of questions and thoughts from the floor. Just one at a time, if you wouldn't mind, please. There's been a couple in the chat, Mark, but one was about the fire safety awareness tool. Um, when is it going to be launched? And I think it's still hoped for April. Um, we've seen a demo just before Christmas. It's looking really good. But there is a session on Thursday about innovation in regulation. Regulators Pioneer Fund are presenting at that, and so is Richard Fowler, who's leading on this um, from NFCC. So if you want to join, I've sent the invite to a few of you. Let me know and I'll um, I'll send the invite over to you. But it's quite exciting, even from someone without a fire safety background, um, to see it developing. That's that one. Um, I think that was it. I like, I like Susan's question about the new tent guidance. <laughs> I think I think I've stayed in one of those tents, by the way, Dave, just, just saying. Fantastic. A, a tent with a fireplace inside it. What could go wrong? <laughs> so so i think i was uh, being glib there but i think dave there was a question from a serious question from susan about the uh, that guidance nfcc guidance being applicable across the uk okay um yeah the um obviously for the 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 guidance that um, is published with the NFCC um, in relation to fire safety um, falls under the scope of the fire safety order, which is across England and Wales. Um, so it's English and Welsh. So it's there for England and Wales. Um, uh, but it does align and um, uh, is well reflected with, with our uh, colleagues in the Scottish area as well. Yeah, Hopefully I, I that think answers Susan, the question. I think, Susan, to be fair, is to, uh, just to elaborate on Dave's point, uh, I mean, some of our devolved administration colleagues would, uh, I'm sure, uh, like at least recognise it as a benchmark to use it against. I mean, that was all the good work that Dave did. NFCC recognised it. So whilst we can't you know, claim it as uh, applicable to the devolved administrations, it would provide a good benchmark to start with if you happen to be working with some of those uh, businesses uh, elsewhere in the country. So the question from Brian Dean about the library that had been taken down. I'm not sure which library he's referring to, but I imagine perhaps an NFCC uh, virtual library. Perhaps Brian, you'll, um, you'll speak up. But uh, the, the, in reference to paying guests, and just to repeat my point, if I was uh, uh, perhaps uh, speaking at a pace at the time, um, NFCC have held on to that do you have paying guest guide in order to launch it as part of that series of three short guides that I mentioned. Um, and the aim is, or the latest I've had, is that they are just going through uh, their final uh, legal stages uh, with uh, various Home Office lawyers and uh, NFCC lawyers just to make sure that it uh, it does what it needs to do. And it will be published uh, before the summer, along with uh, what we have anticipated for some time, uh, which is that wider suite of updates to the uh, what we knew as the CLG guides. Uh, David Bray was the... Um, uh, lead for that project uh, for NFCC. So uh, I think, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm confident that some of the progress of that will start to be emerging in the springtime. Uh, any, any other questions, folks, before I, I wrap us up and give you a bit of your time? No problem, Brian. 
Okay, well, well, thank you to Susan, Brian, and others for your uh, questions. I, I, I hope that um, you know it's just prompted. We've had a, a brief session this afternoon. It is on Teams. It's not ideal, but you've given up your time to listen to us, uh, and I, I just want to repeat what I hope is a legacy. Uh, and for me, uh, primary authority is here to stay, uh, and we've we've got that, haven't we, this afternoon from the fact that it is within now uh, the uh, fire and rescue services standards. Um, it, why it's so important is there ever been such a crucial time given our uh, attempts to recover from the pandemic and, and trying to bring that life back to our high streets the hospitality sector pays such a huge part of it not one person on this call uh, does not benefit from it in a social and personal perspective so let's get behind it through our role our professional role that we have here partnerships work if you go on the nscc website and spend just a couple of minutes just to build on the work that Dave uh, has talked about in his case study, you'll see that not just from a regulatory perspective and the consistency that it drives, there are so many other be benefits by developing these strategic partnerships. And if you've got the right officer to develop those, as Dave has ably demonstrated, those wider benefits of working are just there to be had in terms of other projects that you uh, inevitably get, can get yourselves involved in. Uh, we in West Sussex are just working with a pipeline partner uh, and some of the discussions that we're having are really exciting about how we can benefit each other as well as, of course, delivering that really important uh, regulatory role that we have. So, you know, I just want to really urge and encourage and and if there is that bit, the bit that as a sector, as a fire sector uh, or whatever uh, part of the regulatory environment you represent, we are we have a challenge, don't we? Staffing, the pandemic, there is all sorts of factors that affect us and our ability to live, deliver effective primary authority. But to my fire colleagues, the answer is within your own organisation and you need to nurture those colleagues, those firefighters that currently are out there doing the good stuff on the front line are our primary authority officers of the future. So the sooner you get those folk engaged in this work, the sooner you get our firefighters involved in all things primary authority, uh, that I think the benefits uh, and, the, and the, they'll see how they can contribute that into the future. Uh, and when uh, Dave, myself and other colleagues on the call uh, move on, then they will be the officers that will replace and get involved. And the sooner you get that uh, responsibility pushed down to firefighter level, the better off we will all be in the future. Um, but for now, uh, I'll put my contact details in the chat bar. Uh, again, I'd just like to thank you all for spending some time joining our session this afternoon for whoever's been engaging. My final message will, of course, be about the hospitality panel, and please join myself and Caroline on that panel. It's one thing to sit for 45 minutes and listen to me this afternoon. It's quite another to get up and influence change. That's what we need, and that's what that panel is designed to achieve. So get involved, get that um, conduit to your partnerships and help us hold that hospitality council to uh, account over those 22 recommendations uh, and let's hope for a much more positive look forward and a great deal more partnerships in the future but for now uh, thanks very much i'll just hand back to caroline uh, for the final words but thanks everyone and thank you dave there's just a, a couple of bits in the chat mark um that you might have missed um jj jonathan james however you want to address him jj wants to know if you want to add anything about airbnb 30 seconds well, well only my my reflection on the do you have paying guest guide now and we are i i work with airbnb i'm on their um uh, uh, uh expert panel um, so they benefit, if you like, from the revised do you have paying best guest guide, because when I talked about the shared economy, I was using the generic term, obviously, for all of our colleagues that work in that uh, space, not just Airbnb. Uh, we recognise it is a challenge to provide consistent uh, uh, advice in what is such a fluid and dynamic and exciting sector. But nonetheless, that's what the do you have paying guest guide is predicated upon. And uh, I'll say, you know, the Airbnb are really excited and supportive of that proportionate pragmatic approach that helps bring together the more traditional hospitality sector with that uh, exciting new sh uh, uh, up and coming shared economy of which, of course, Airbnb is just but one. And then just Thanks, Mark. And then Susan's just asked if we'll be checking that local fire authorities um, have the guidance up on their websites. 
Uh, yes, Susan, they will. Um, as I say, we're probably a couple of months out yet from them being published, and we'll do some. I'm sure some quite exciting launch uh, around that that new guidance because it's been much uh, much overdue, overdue frankly. Uh, uh, but uh, as soon as it is, it'll be hosted by National Fire Chiefs Council so, to make sure that uh, it, it is consistent and updated and fresh. Uh, but you'll find a link on that either through uh, your local fire and rescue service or directly into National Fire Chiefs Council. But uh, I'm sure, Susan, you're going to be putting your name down for the hospitality panel so we can catch up about that another day. Right, just run slightly over, but thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's session this afternoon and the rest of the sessions today. And I hope to see you at future sessions over the next couple of days. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. In normal times, we'd all be heading to the bar, but maybe next time. So thanks again. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Thanks, folks.